All right, and let me. Everybody make sure you are on camera. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. So good to see everybody. All right, so we are streaming live. Hello to everyone that's on Facebook. I hope everyone had a great, great week. Hey, Director Brown, how are you doing? Her, oh, her audio is still connected. Um, okay, so last week, man, we went over a lot last week. So as we do every week in boot camp, um, I want to circle back to last week's training and what you did with the information. So last week we went over the Jappy 2.0, right? How to peak interest um, and peaking interest when you're out. We also discussed setting up your weekly goals. And so during the week, I did a post asking everyone, what is your weekly goal for peaks? exposures and three ways. And so, and then we also talked about, again, peaking while you're out. So now you have the tool of how to peak, right? We went over, um, you know, are you open to looking at ways to earn additional streams of income as one peak? Um, and then we went over the fill the need peak, if I could show you how, right? And then we also went over the loves to travel peak. And I also sent everybody the link to the Jaffe 2.0 training on YouTube that goes into a lot more detail about what videos to send, when to send, and how to send. So the first thing I want to talk about is the three ways that we did training on how to peak uh, from the Jaffe 2.0 training. So I want to know who used it this past week? Who used those peaks and how did it go for you? Who wants to go first? I'll go first, Director Burke. Okay. Good evening, right. good evening, everyone. Hi there. Good evening, everyone. I actually used exactly um, the way you said, and let me tell you, it did work because I got three people on. Um, I got about probably seven people total. Mm -hmm. And um, they haven't signed up. <laughs> I said, wow, it was good that I did get that far, but they haven't signed up. However, I, um, I followed up with everyone and three people promised that, excuse me, as soon as they get their money together, they will jump on. Excellent, excellent. That is great. So Paulette, which peak did you use on them? Um, it was the PS3 and you did, what was the other one you asked? If I show you how you can make, I use those two on them. Okay, okay. So you use the, if I could, are you keeping your options open to earning open. additional streams of income? Okay. Yes, ma'am, yes. Okay, yes. and then the one, if I could show you how to fill the need. Okay, good. And so yes. how did you expose did them work. to the business? Did you get them on a webinar or did you send the videos out? Um, I tried to get them on the webinar yesterday, but um, they weren't comfortable because I think it was a Jamaican. So my three people told me they prefer to wait until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. However, I did send the 11 minute video as well. And I think Excellent. that's what got their, their interest. That is perfect. Anytime you invite somebody to a webinar, also go ahead and send a video because just in yeah. case they don't get on the webinar, they're still exposed. Paulette, I am so proud of you. Good job. Good job, Thank Paulette. You. That is awesome. Who else wants to talk about their experience with using the Jappy scripts? Go ahead, like Corey. Oh. Hold on. Hold on, Natisha. Corey? So um, I went through like my messenger. And mm -hmm. I just kind of like went through and I did um, um, the one script where of uh, the opportunity, what was it? Would you like the op opportunity? Are you, do you leave your op options open um, to earn extra, income, er mm -hmm. earn extra income? 
Then I went to a business opportunity meeting in um, Chicago and I, um, <clears throat> the three-star director, Tisha DeShields was uh -huh. there. Tisha DeShields, uh-huh. <clears throat> and she used, um, when people asked her, like, what do you do? She says, um, I work in marketing and I assist position people, average people to make above average income in, tra in, in travel. Mm -hmm. So nice. I started mm -hmm. using that mm -hmm. when I'm out in public. Okay. So um, this weekend, I had a couple of events that I went to um, because what Wait, I you did- you left your house? Are you, are you telling us you left your house to expand your network? I know, because wait a minute, you wait a minute, hold on to your hats, okay? Uh -oh. So I was in, I've been in some groups on Facebook and these groups were um, like making friends, black, black women friends or something, one of those groups like that. And um, so I had found some, a group of women that were like in my neighborhood Mm -hmm. and um I met this woman who guess what she's in education so there's like a niche there because you know mm -hmm. they don't get paid in the summertime right so I was like okay let me chum me up and um we we went out for um I didn't go go in because that that was that's my first fault like mm -hmm. I go in for the kill but mm -hmm. I've learned to fall back a little bit and just mm -hmm. kind of start to build the relationship first Good. So we had met on Wednesday for dinner. And then um, Saturday, we went out for to go to a comedy show. And then there was someone that was sitting in front of me that was an esthetician. And she asked me what I did. And then that's when I hit her with the Tisha the Shields line. And then we actually, I gave her my, my card. Mm -hmm. And she gave me hers. So I'm going to follow up with her this week um, and, and kind of talk to her a little bit this week. Um, and then also from that group, I met another young lady and we actually met today for brunch and we talked and um, she's a flight attendant. So I'm not quite sure how I could use her to my advantage. That's one of my questions that I had for you and Director Brown of what, how, what I could say to her because she's a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. But um, there I did um, speak to my server and mm -hmm. I spoke to a couple of guests that were um, in attendance at the restaurant. And I used the line Where there. So. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You stepped out of your comfort zone. And did you die? I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm wore, let me tell you, I'm wore out. My schedule ain't never been so booked and busy. I said, let me check my palm palette and see if I'm available. <laughs> she took it back. I am so proud of you, Corey. Director Brown, what you want to say to that? I mean, they, they moving. Listen, I'm over here just a smiling because you had a couple dates over the weekend. You just to talking to people and meeting people and brunch and lunch and right. all types of stuff. So I love it. I love it. And That's I think what it looks like. it's especially now people have gotten so comfortable with online, with Zooms and FaceTime and all types of stuff. And people are not meeting in person a lot anymore. So the fact that you did that and just out of groups, somebody that you wouldn't have never connected with if it wasn't because of that group. So not only can you network inside of groups and talk online, but as Corey did, you get to take that offline and meet in person and build that relationship. And like you said, you're not just jumping out for the kill anymore. You're building a relationship, getting to know these people. And now they're going to be more comfortable with you and more interested in getting more information about what you do. In I'll fact, in fact, the the lady that the, the, that's in education, she's going to um, because she was afraid. She was like, I think that's just too much on my plate. So I mean, there was a lot of resistance. Wasn't quite sure how to handle that resistance. Um, but she said that you know, I'll pass. She's going to pass the, you know the information on to her colleagues, and she's like, maybe you could do a presentation 
or something like that with her colleague, you know, with her colleagues. And, you know, so she wasn't like, it wasn't a, a dead no, right. but, mm-hmm. you know, I, so I'm like, okay, so I'll, I'll just reach, reach to my, in my mind, I'm thinking I'll just go to my leadership for some additional assistance yeah. on how to handle that. Yeah. So when you go out, when you're meeting someone from brunch and lunch, it's really, um, you got to be careful because you're there to have conversation, but what you don't want to do is try to explain the business. Right. Right. I right? kept it real simple. I kept it real simple. Right. And I said, um, I just said, I just basically said the statement, you know, you want to earn some extra income? And then the one lady that was sitting next to me, she was like, um, well, who doesn't? And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I said, well, here's my card. I said, give me a call. And um, I, she, I gave her, and then she gave me her information. And I said, um, if I don't hear from you tonight, I'll call you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'll probably call her sometime, you know, a little later tomorrow or whatever. So here's it's the thing. Later. That was the opportunity. What, what you want to do with that situation is send them the video and invite them to a webinar. So mm-hmm. listen, I want you to just see the information the way I saw it mm-hmm. and let's schedule a call to talk and then you know you can give me your feedback and I can get your questions answered. So right then and there at the table during the meeting, that's when you want to schedule the three-way call. But they don't know it's a three-way call at this point. Mm-hmm. Just say, listen, I want to invite you on to the webinar. I'll also send you, you know, a video and let's schedule. How about we meet, you know, I'll give you a call tomorrow at such and such a time. And you just boom, you schedule it. That's the three-way call that you're scheduling. So now she's going to get on the webinar and or she's going to look at the video that you send her. But now you already have the three-way call set up with Crystal Brown or myself or a senior Mm -hmm. business. We are the ones that are going to address her concerns about the time. Okay. Show her how. That's not for you to do. Okay. So all of you, listen, all of you, your role is to find the people that are open to looking and expose them. That's it. The questions and how am I going to do this with what I'm, that's what we do. That's what the three-way call is for. That is not for you to do. So do not get yourself put in a situation, backed into a corner where now you talking too much and they're asking you questions because now you can't get out of it. And Mm -hmm. if you try to avoid it, now you look like you're scamming. Mm -hmm. So how can you leverage that? You can say, listen, I'm still new in the business, but my senior business partner She's a three-star director. She has a team of over 500 people. Matter of fact, I have several coaches. I want you to talk to them because you have some really good questions, but I'd rather you get your answers, the answer to your questions by someone who is successful and has been in the business way longer than me. They're helping me. So you don't mm-hmm. want me answering your questions. I want you to, I'm going to put you on the phone with the people that are making the big money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how you get out of it. Because then they're going to respect you. You're not trying to say, oh, I'm making, no, listen, I'm new, but I'm working with some very successful people in the business. I get one-on-one coaching with them, six-figure income earners, you know, the teams of over 500 people. That's who's helping me. So Mm -hmm. I want them to answer your questions because I'm still new. But here's what I can tell you. The training and the support is amazing. We got webinars, we got, co- so you could talk about your experience and the mm-hmm. support, right? You can talk about, you know what, I'm busy too, but I'm able, the reason why I got started is because I'm able to work this in my schedule. We got mm-hmm. people who do the business full-time. We got mm-hmm. people who got kids, work a full-time job and they're in school and they still find a way to do this business. So if they can do it, I know you can do it. Mm-hmm. That's the conversation. Mm-hmm. Brown, you want to? to that? Yes, I wanted to add a a perfect example. I had a three-way call during the week and the person texts me. I don't know if she's on, but she texts me and she said, my prospect is a three. So I don't think we need to do the call. And I said, no, we're still going to do the call. And we got on that three-way call and I asked her at the end on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel about getting started? And she said, I'm a 10. I'm ready to get started today. But before I got on the line for that three-way call, 
the business partner was trying to answer some of her questions. And then the prospect said, I'm a three. But once I got on the call and answered those same questions, she turned into a 10. So we don't want to do too much talking. Get yourself out of the way and have that three-way call. Love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Kimberly. Yes, I what I realized this week that I did differently is um, I went in my planning marketing back office and started uh, making copies of the uh, screenshots of the live uh, webinars. And so my plan this week is to attach them to my code messages for people who live in those areas, um, just to start leveraging those meetings more. And um, I also realized this past week I was slammed with people uh, wanting me to find a trip for them. And I realized that um, I don't wanna be a booker. <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather be on the planning marketing side. So um, that was my uh, aha moment this week with doing more with the uh, code messaging and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you're wanting to attach to your messages? The live webinars, like say- for Oh, instance, the link to things. invite them to the, yes. Yes, that's good. That's good. Uh -huh, for the for different uh, cities. Oh, okay. To go to the actual meeting. Okay. Well, I would hold off on sending that until they tell you that they're open to looking. Okay. Okay. You don't want to hit somebody cold and then start sending them information. That is a total turnoff. Okay. You got to build rapport. Mm -hmm. peek them first and find out if they're open to looking and then if they mm -hmm. are now you can invite them to a local meeting and while if they say yes go ahead and still send a big picture video in case they don't make it to the meeting okay sounds great all right miss beverly hello hello Hi. Um, so i have i've definitely seen a lot of activity um, and this week I had an opportunity and I'm piggyback off what the other young lady said. I had an opportunity. Uh, I met with a couple young ladies and one of them told me that she was just so, she's just too busy and she would love to do this business, but her work schedule is just too, she has too much going on. And so rather than trying to push or do the three-way, I just let it go at that. Now, the, it was two of them. The other one, um, I did get a three-way with her and she's supposed to be signing up in the next day or two. Nice. So with the first one, mm -hmm. I should have pushed for a follow-through with a call. I would ask questions because here's the thing. It, it, it cracks me up when people say they have a crazy work schedule. You ain't working 24 hours. You either work in an eight hour shift or you work in a 12 hour shift, but you ain't working 24 hours. So my first question would be, how long has that been a problem? Mm. How long has that, how long have you had that problem of having a crazy work schedule? Mm. Right. Cause the question is, do they like that? Or if they had an opportunity to change that, would they want to at least take a look at an opportunity that can give them their time back? Or do they want to do that forever? And then the other question that I ask some people sometimes, and it just kind of depends on who and how the situation is, I ask them, well, how much time do you think it requires? Because we ain't talk about how much time. So people crack me up when they say, I don't have the time, but I ain't even tell you how much time it takes. Well. So okay. I, don't, I don't let them get away with giving me, because that's just ignorance. They don't know what they don't know. Mm. And then there's always the uh, feel, felt, found. I know how you feel because I felt the same way because my schedule was blah, blah, blah. I got kids. I also do. So then you talk about how, how crazy your schedule is. But what mm. I found was, you know, this opportunity allows me to work around my schedule. And I realized if I don't do something to change that, then that was going to be my, I'll always be time broke. Mm -hmm. 
So feel, felt, found. I know how you okay. feel. I felt the same way because I had the da, 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 da. But what I found once I actually got in the business is it allowed me, I saw once I actually used a schedule, I saw I did have time to fight for my freedom. Okay, and it's so. and it's and we all have the same 24 hours. We can't find time, we can't make time, we need to prioritize time. So if it's important to you to get financial freedom and time freedom, you will find a way. And if it's not, you'll find an excuse. Like I call people out on their stuff, but you got to have posture to be able to have that kind of conversation. Uh so you might want to start with feel felt found. Uh Director Brown, what, what do you want to add to that? It's, that's my favorite question as well, or my favorite uh, excuse or rejection as well. Mm -hmm. I know Director White will always leverage me when she has a mother, a single mother specifically, that says they don't have time because they're a mom. Like, Director Brown, I got a single mom in the line that said she don't have time. Can you please talk to her? And it's my favorite because when I first got started in this business, so I have two daughters, for those who don't know, my oldest is 14. My youngest is six. When I started the business, my youngest was one years old. I was working a full-time job. I still work full-time now, but I was also in grad school full-time mm. and working this business. And so like Director Burke said, if you want to make this work, if financial freedom is important to you, which it was important to me, I found the time and I was not spending hours. I say maybe two hours a day two to three hours a day. And that wasn't even in one sitting. I might do a Zoom for an hour. I might do something else for 30 minutes, 15 minutes, but I found those pockets of time to make it work. So if you want to do it, you definitely will find a way to make it work. Time is not, that's not even an issue. And like Director Burke said, I didn't even tell you how much time you need. And you already saying you don't got no time. You don't even know how much time you need yet. So right. still get them on the phone with an expert to deal with that uh, rejection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not even a rejection. It's an objection. Objection. Yes. Yeah. We, we can overcome the objections. That's what the three-way call is for. That is not for you to do. You are not the one to overcome the objections. That is for the senior business partner to do, your expert. Get yourself out of the way. At some point, as you grow a team, you will be doing the three-way calls for your downline. Now you get to be the expert on the three-way call. And because you've heard us answer, you know, and overcome those same, because it's always like the same five or six objections. They don't really change from that. And after you hear us overcome those objections by doing your three-way calls, when it comes time for you to be the expert, now you know how to do it. All right, Destiny, I saw your hand up. Hi, yes. So I did use the scripts um, several times this week. And um, I can't remember who mentioned it, but I too also like joined some groups online because I work 10 hours a day. So me going out the house is really limited other than like groceries and dropping a kid off or something. <laughs> um, so I am trying to, you know, interact more with people. I was actually in a group today. Um, I'm in this writer's group and we were talking about doing a retreat for writers. And so, you know, the scripts allow me to kind of get out of my comfort zone. So I was like, oh, that's a good idea. You know, when we are ready to do that retreat, you know, I can definitely, um, you know, assist with planning that since I am a travel advisor. And then of course I got met with, oh, that's, a, that's good. You know, I've been planning our retreats for the last 30 years. <laughs> so, you know, I've been getting those type of objections where, you know, I'm already into something or doing something. Um, I have been kind of mindful too of like, who I am reaching out to. I think you mentioned that about, you know, qualifying your people, your prospects. Mm -hmm. um, so like I've seen someone's post who had mentioned that they were looking for an additional job, but then they had also just booked their own trip. And so I got in this person's inbox and just, you know, said, um, you know, I see you are booking your new, your own trip and you were talking about additional income. You know, have you ever looked into, um, you know, exploring other options to be able to do that for yourself? And of course she said the same thing that you guys have mentioned that she just didn't have time. That wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. it was something that she couldn't have on her plate at this time. And I'm thinking, but you just said you needed it, you know? So I've been trying to watch that too. Um, I did have two follow-ups this week that kind of like fell through. Um, one of my follow-ups I did, it's actually funny because she kept, you know, saying she still needs to think about it. But while she's thinking about it, she's referring people to me. She's like, yeah, I was talking to someone and I told them they should get in the business. I'm like, but you still haven't made that decision. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so yeah <laughs> that's good destiny so with the person who said they've been planning it for 30 years are they in the travel business she did say yes that she is in the travel business oh she's mm -hmm. already in the business oh okay. yeah mm -hmm. all right that's good that's good yeah you're gonna get that i mean you're gonna get that that's why you know when you're when you're looking at these groups sometimes you might want to drill down instead of getting like a big group that's just like let's say uh teachers you're like okay i want to go after the teachers because they're underpaid and they're off on the summer so they're perfect for the business right and so you might say teachers well you could drill down to teachers in georgia but then you could drill down teachers duval county teachers you know and break it down to the county as well and if you do that you you may find less uh, planet marketing reps as you drill down to the in the groups. If that does that make sense? I feel like I'm babbling. Y'all understand what I'm saying? No, it, it, it makes sense. It kind of narrows down the pot a little bit more. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. I did mean to ask you too, which business card should we have? Because like when I first started, you know, you all excited and giddy. I got the Intelli Travel business cards, mm -hmm. but then I've since like you know, created a logo change, stop using my personal phone number. So I don't want to use those business cards now. Mm -hmm. um, so should we, I know in the app, it says business card, but I have never actually seen the planet market um, business card. Is that what we should be using? Which would you yes. suggest? So when you are talking about recruiting someone into the business, you must use your planet marketing card. You cannot it is non-compliant to give out your IntelliTravel card when you are recruiting someone into the business. And so when you go to leads, if you have the person in your leads and you click share and you click business card, you have an electronic version of your business card. So that's what you wanna use. Now, another option, uh, and this is something that actually when me and Camette, Director Turner, first joined the business, we did this. And then now we've taken it to a whole other level. And actually, I just did one for one of my business par uh, partners today. And I call this one the peak interest business card. So I used Canva, right? Started off with a blank card and I got this from the planet marketing back office so when you log into uh, your planet marketing website if you go into where is it marketing materials or is it library resources let me see it's marketing um, materials it was marketing materials okay mm-hmm because uh, Kim told me about it. I got mine. I did mine today. I got, in fact, I got mine today. Okay, good. So yeah, under marketing materials, they have all these different um, images that you can use. And so I use the What's Your Plan B one that has the planet marketing thing. And I just, you know, put this on there, text more info, added a picture, the name, and then on the back created a QR code to the big picture video and you can get the QR code right when you're in Canva. If you scroll down, you just click on QR code and then you just type in whatever QR code, whatever the website is, and then it'll generate the QR code. So I use this. So I basically have three different business cards. I have my IntelliTravel business card, and I only use that card when I'm talking to someone about booking their trip. I have my Planet Marketing black cards. I use that card when I have time. Like, for example, Corey was able to go to brunch with someone, sit down, have a conversation, right? She had, you know, half hour, hour with that person. In that scenario, I'm going to give them my planet marketing black card at the end of that conversation because I now have had time to speak with that person. I know what they're looking for. I was able to tell them what I do, blah, 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 blah. So the card, now they know, right? But there's sometimes there's going to be situations where you're in a checkout line at the grocery store. You don't have 
30 minutes to talk to someone, but you want to leave them with something, but you want them to know what you're leaving them because you didn't get a chance to have a conversation with them. That's mm -hmm. where I find the peak interest business cards are the best, right? Mm -hmm. Server, when they bring me the check, it's this card that I'm leaving them because I don't have the time to have a whole conversation to talk about, oh, well, this is what I do and have it. I don't have time. They mm -hmm. got other tables. So I leave them with this card, you know, give my quick spiel. Hey, I'm a travel business owner and I help people like you who want to earn extra income position themselves on the money making side of the travel industry. Here's my card. Do you know how to scan a QR code? Great. You scan this. It's going to take you to a 10 minute video. If you like what you see, just, you know, text more info to me and then we can schedule a time to talk. So this is what I, I keep these everywhere. If I go through the Starbucks line, through the drive through you give me my uh, receipt, I'm giving you one of these because this tells them everything they need to know without me having to say anything because I didn't have time to do it. Make sense? And that's just one version. You can create your own version. I just put enough on there to pique people because with the black card, I love my black card, but it don't tell you nothing about what we do. So it's just another business card that's going to end up in somebody's drawer, the shoe box, the junk drawer, <laughs> right? Any questions or comments about that? I have a question about that. Yes. I have a question about that. So when, even when we do have a conversation about, and we do leave them with that black card and they do have access to our website, um, aren't we or should we be concerned about them going onto the website and maybe um poking around in there and maybe we want them to do that we want them what, to do that but here's, want the, here's them to, the thing here's the thing Corey. remember bam fam who knows what bam fam stands for um book a book a meeting from a meeting right so you're having brunch with that person. So before you leave that brunch, you're scheduling another appointment with them to speak with them. Mm -hmm. So now you're giving them your card. Okay, they're going around and clicking on the website. Great. That means they'll hopefully generate some questions, but you already have an appointment to talk to them. So now their questions are going to get answered on that three-way call with your senior business partner. So we shouldn't be worried about if they go in there and just start like enrolling and all that other stuff. Well, I mean, of course we want I them mean, to. If they enroll, they great. Thing, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> if they enroll, great. You know, that means there's somebody that's hungry. They made a decision. But again, they enroll, but you already have an appointment set scheduled to speak with them. So now that okay. might turn into the welcome call. Okay. I have a question also. This is Beverly. Where did hey, you print those? Hey, what, where did you print those uh, peak interest card? Did you do it? Through? My understanding is you can order it straight from Canva, but what oh. I did was download it as a JPEG and I order all my cards through Vistaprint. So I was able to upload the image to Vistaprint. You can, you can get them printed through Canva. I got mine printed through Canva and um... I paid for it. They sent it to my house. I think I got it within like two days. There you go. So you can order directly through Canva or download the image. You could take it to a Staples or Office Max or a FedEx office. As long as you have the image, you can, you know, do whatever you need to do with it. Every once in a blue moon, I'll just post that image on my Facebook page. That's an ad all in itself. <laughs> Any other questions about that? All right. Who else used the scripts last week? Oh, here's my other question. We talked about the scripts. Who met their weekly goal for peaks, exposures, and three ways? Because that's, that's the ultimate thing. Did anybody meet their goals for any of them, whether it was for your peaks for the week or the exposures? Let's talk about it because that's the work. That's the work. This is Beverly. I, I met my peaks. Good. Good yeah. job, Beth. So let uh, me ask you this. On Sunday night, did you have your list of the people you were going to peak for the week so that you weren't wasting time trying to sort and find them and all of that? Yes, because I'm using um, 
I'm, I'm still doing it by paper because it just works best for me. But I have, well, you won't be able to see it. I have the list of all my people here. So I can, I, I keep that handy with me. I don't know if you can see it or not. But this little booklet really helps me organize and keep it straight. Okay. So yeah. what, what I'm making sure is that I'm continuing to add new people when I say I'm for that week. So I have my goal set for the week. And uh, with that goal set for the week, I make sure if I'm if I'm short, um, if I notice I'm short by Friday or Saturday, I add more peaks because mine is five a day. So mm -hmm. it's 35 a week. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good job. So how did you do with the three-way calls? I didn't get as many three-way calls as I hoped to get. Mm -hmm. uh, I got the peak, I, I peaked interest. Um, I did get some, I got about 10 people who they said they were going to be on a, on a presentation or they will listen to the video. And of course some haven't. Um, so, so 10 people, so you, you peaked 35 people and 10 people said, yes, I'm open to looking. And so you sent out 10 videos. I sent out videos and or, so I'm using the videos, the on demand. Um, and okay, wait, wait, the, I'm okay, looking at my wait, wall. Wait. It sounds like wait. you're doing too much. I want to know specifically when someone is saying, yes, I'm open to looking, what are you doing next? I'm listening to them to tell me how, what kind of time they have. So if they're, if they're saying they're real busy, they don't have a lot of time, um, I won't invite them to the um, to the business, the Zoom. I'm wanting to see if I can send them the video or mm -hmm. the on demand. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to I'm trying to determine rather than always inviting somebody to Zoom who never mm -hmm. show up, mm -hmm. what's the best? Uh, what's the, the video best? Video is tool? always the easiest way. The video is always okay. the easiest way. Everybody should get the video. So you don't feel like that on demand? Because I've been, um, I think more was talking about that on demand. Do you recommend that on demand I, call? I, it, the on demand is is good for like truck drivers, someone who drives right. for a living. They can't be looking, but they can, you know, listen. Or maybe they work in a, a, a factory or something. So they can have their earbuds in. But why do you think TikTok is so big? Because people like videos. Mm -hmm. Most people are visual learners. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the video is the most effective way to expose people to the business. And again, if you watch the Jappy 2.0 training, right, I, I go over how to use the preview videos. I go over how to use the peak videos and when to send the big picture video. Okay. So you shouldn't be confused of, what, how to expose them, I give you step by step in the Jappy 2.0 training. Now you ain't got to use it. You could do what you want to do, but I'm telling you what's been working. So Beverly, you shouldn't be confused about what you should send. It's all in Jappy 2.0. And again, y'all are the CEOs of your own business. You can do what you want to do. I'm just offering what's been working for me and what I've been training other people to do and it's working for them. But if you end up trying to go a different way, don't, don't get mad if you're not getting the same result that the rest of us are getting. It's because you're trying to create your own, you're trying to reinvent the wheel. There's a reason why Mr. Bradley created peak videos, preview videos, and the big picture video. And at one of our um, events with him, he, he broke down why he created the three different ones. And so my Jappy 2.0 training is based on what he said during that meeting. And I said, got it. Okay, let me, let me show people how to really use this. So Beverly is there, but then now you, you're trying to do something different. And, and can I share a little something? Absolutely. Um, the only reason I was doing that is because and I guess I, I should have shifted when I did watch that. But I had, we had talked about the five ways we peak interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when we went over that five ways we peak interest, 
do we put them on a Zoom? Do we do a um, the uh, video? Do we do the on demand? Do we do have them in a travel show or, or the uh, mm-hmm. uh, private business reception? Or do we take them to a live meeting? Mm-hmm. And so with all those exposure tools, I said, okay, I have to learn how to realize what's best for the person I'm working with. Absolutely. So I, I agree with you. However, let me say this. The easiest way to expose someone, especially busy people, is going to be a video, period. I don't care what they do for a living. That is the easiest, simplest way, and they get to watch it on their, um, at their convenience. So now I've exposed someone to a 10-minute video, got them on a three-way call, that didn't close them. So guess what I'm going to expose them to now? A 30-minute webinar. Gotcha. Got their questions answered, that didn't close them, guess what I'm going to do? Invite them to a 60 minute corporate event, weekly meeting somewhere so they can meet the leadership, experience a closure, mm, experience okay. the culture. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level it up, right? That didn't close them. Guess what? I do weekly webinars, at, uh, presentations at my house. Come to my home. I want you to meet my family. I want you to meet my neighbors. I do a weekly thing. You know, you need another exposure. So it's video. This is just me. This is the world according to Tanisha, and it doesn't mean anything to anybody but me. But that is how I do it. And I'm telling you, I close 99.9% of my people with the videos. Mm, gotcha. Okay, thank you. And if they give me a commitment date and they don't sign, then that's that's what I'm hearing is, okay, you need another exposure. The 10-minute the video wasn't enough for you. Let me get you on a webinar. I want you to hear Mr. Moore. I want to get you on a Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday corporate webinar so you can get this 30-minute presentation. Mm-hmm. If they don't okay. commit to the, the sign-up date or is go, you understand what I'm saying? There's levels. I get so it. Use the level. So, so um, that's what I'm going to do. So you just you just uh, clarify that for me. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use the video and then I'm going to level up on the other ones. Thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. I bet you next week I have more three ways. <laughs> this week. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Director Brown? Yes, I would just add again, in my in my world, everybody can do whatever they want to do, but I always share the video first. The video is also the first exposure tool for me. So I never invite someone to a Zoom for their very first time seeing the information. Right. Again, okay. you can do however you want to do it. Me personally, I always use the video first. And like Director Burke said, if they do not sign up, they saw the video, they had a three-way, they still didn't sign up. Now I'm going to invite you to the Zoom because I'm letting you know this is going to be more in-depth. They're going to go over in detail a little bit more of the things that were in the video. And this may help you with making that decision. Just me, just me. Yep, same thing, same with me. Even if I invite someone to the weekly meeting, that's not their first exposure. They've already been exposed to the big picture video. That should not be the first exposure. You want to expose them to something before they get on a webinar or to the weekly meeting. They should have an idea of what it's about. Not like, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what to expect. What? How are you going to do business like that? This ain't, let me trick you and say, we going out for coffee and now boom, it's a business presentation. Like they should know. They should know exactly what it is they're being exposed to. Christine? Good evening, everybody. I just had a quick question about sharing the video first. Do you um share the video with or with or do you share the video without an appointment to talk first? No, nobody gets a video without scheduling the three-way call. So go back and watch the Jappy 2.0. <clears throat> In there, when I talk about sharing the previews. So let's say I'm peaking Director Brown, right? And I say, hey, Crystal, listen, I know you're a single mom, just, and I know you, you have your job and stuff, but just curious, are you open to looking at ways to earn additional streams of income outside of what you currently do? And if she tells me yes, and I say, great, listen, I'm a, I'm a travel business owner. I help people like you earn extra income in the travel industry. I'm going to send you a couple of videos to give you the concept of what this business opportunity is about. If you like what you see, let me know. And then we can schedule a time to talk. So now I'm sending her preview rep and preview ITA. Well, let me say it back the other way. I'm sending her to preview ITA first. And then I send her to preview rep. 
Why? Because it's a $200 opportunity, but you're getting two businesses. So you never send one video without the other. Preview ITA is going to show Crystal the concept of how we earn income as a travel agent. And the preview rep is going to show Crystal the concept of earning leveraged and residual income. Within 24 hours, I'm following up with her. Hey, Crystal, after having watching those two videos, is this something you're interested in learning more about? She's going to say, absolutely. I love to travel. And I say, great. When are you available for a call so we can discuss? I can get your questions answered and you can decide if this is a good fit for you. And she's going to say, how about, uh, you know, Monday night at eight? I say, okay, great. That works. I got you down Monday at eight. Got your phone number. Crystal, listen, I'm going to text you a 10 minute video. I want you to watch it, write down all your questions, and I'll be sure to get your questions answered on the call tomorrow night. Look forward to speaking with you. Have a great evening. Done. And Is I just want to make sure that it was clear that Director Burt got the number before, before she sent the video, she got the number first. And the appointment. I got yes. the number, the date, and the time. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets the big picture video without the appointment. That's like, that's like my big joker. I'm not going to just give you my big joker. You're going to give me something and that's the appointment. Now, there's one exception that I have to that rule of me not sending the preview videos first. And, that, and, and let me go back. The reason why I will, if I'm peaking someone that I send the previews first, and this is mainly on social media, is because there's some people who have had bad experiences in network marketing. And if I send them the big picture video too early, it scares them because it's clear that there's a network marketing component to it. So I don't want them putting that wall up like, oh, no, no, I did Cincy and lost all my money. No, I want to expose them to the concept of how they can make money in the travel industry and how they can create this leveraged and residual income. So once they see that and they're like, okay, oh, yeah, this seems good. Now, now that wall is down. And now I'm saying, great, when are you available for a call? I already got the appointment. So now if you get scared from the big picture video, it's okay, because I already have an appointment. I'm still calling you. And now it's on that call. You can tell me, oh, no, I'm scared of network marketing. and I, But I like the travel side. But guess what? I got um, on the phone with my senior business partner who's going to overcome that objection. I ain't even got to deal with that. So that's number one. So when is my ex my exception of when I just send the big picture video? Obviously, if I'm using the peak interest card, it's going straight to the big picture video. But if I do a post on social media that is very clear and direct, I have a business opportunity. It's in travel. If you want to know about it, private message me. If it's really clear, then when they say, I'm interested, I'm interested, now I'm just going straight to the big picture video. I'm going to say, great, when are you available for a call so we can discuss? What's your number? What time? What date? Listen, I'm going to send you a 10-minute video because I don't need to give them the concept of what the business is about. The post was very clear that it's in travel. But if it's an ambiguous post, like who wants to be able to leave a legacy for their family and you get me, 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 okay, I'm going to... I'm going to introduce you first with the preview videos. And then if you like it, then I'm going to set the appointment and then send you the three-way call. So that's my exception. Or if someone's been following me for a while and they just randomly jump in my inbox and say, hey, I'm interested in your business. Guess what? They already know what it is. I'm, I'm going to say, great. When are you available for a call so we can discuss? What's your number? What's the date time? And then I'm going to send them the big picture video because they approached me. Okay, that means so, they already have a clue. Okay, so hindsight being 2020, I'm looking at my board and um, I have a young lady, um, very busy. She says she's too busy to um, sit down to watch a Zoom. So I invited her to, and I know you just said, you know, the meeting should not be their first exposure. So would you, she says she's uh, coming on Tuesday night to the in-person meeting. So would I send her, should I send her the big picture video before she comes on Tuesday? I would send her the preview ITA and preview rep. So she can see the concept. Say, listen, I'm going to send you a couple of videos that's going to give you an idea of um, 
the business opportunity. And then when you come to the meeting, you're going to get more detail. Because again, the preview ITA and preview rep really makes people interested in it. They want more information because it doesn't give them enough information. Like it don't mention the name of Planet Marketing. It don't, you know, break down the compensation plan, but it helps people get, it changes their mindset about just going to work and getting a check. And they're like, yeah, I can make money while I'm on the beach. Yeah, I like, okay, yeah. I, I, now, now they're going to want to get to the meeting. They're going to make the meeting a priority because you gave them the preview ITA and preview rep. So I wouldn't just go straight in. I mean, that's just me. I wouldn't send them the big picture video if they've already committed to the meeting. I'm, I'm going to send them preview ITA and preview rep to really sweeten it. So they're going to be like, oh, I can't wait to get to this meeting because what I saw in those two videos, I like what I'm seeing. What about the video that Mr. Bradley just dropped the other day, the UK, um, the UK marketing video from his trip over there? What, what about you, it? I, well, I was in the culture. Right. So I, I have. So what I've been doing, what I did over the last few days is I was doing. So I did follow up Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so I went in my app and all of my leads that I've been building rapport with over the last year. And I, I shouldn't say it like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. But I've been building rapport with these people for over a year. I'm putting notes in my in my app about you know what they're saying and when I'm gonna follow back up with them. And so I just divide, I just composed a quick text to like um let me see, one of the ones I sent. Young lady, we have a history, we go way back, and she's been kind of one foot in, one foot out for the longest. I called her, she didn't answer, I left her a message and I said, I just wanted to follow up with you. Um, I know you said you were interested, but you haven't made it on the Zoom yet. She's watched the videos. And I said, well, this is a two minute video from my founder and CEO, Mr. Donald Bradley, sent the video. I said, send me a quick text after you watch it to let me know if you want more information or if you want to be removed from my callbacks. Yeah, I mean, that's one way of doing it. Director Brown, how would you handle that? Um, the video, as soon as that video got released, and it's a great video if no one has seen it, and it's just used to, like Director Burke said, to show the culture and to be inspirational. But I think when the video came out, I had a lot of people like, okay, I sent them the video, I set up a three-way call, and then come to find out, I'm like, what video did you send? And they sent that video. So I just want to be clear that that video does not share the, the business. And I know, Christine, that's not why you were sending it, but I wanted to make sure it was clear to everyone that that is just to show the culture, to inspire them. And he does talk about timing and positioning and, you know, you need to be in this. So somebody could say, oh, yeah, I do want some more information. So I almost do kind of the same thing, not with a video per se, Christine, but I do do that line of, if you want more information, let me know, or if you are still interested, let me know. If you are no longer interested, let me know as well so I can remove you from my list. Mm -hmm. And using that, a lot of times people don't want to, they don't even know what this list is, but they don't want to be removed from the list. So it nice. came in. Um, get you to get an answer. So I'll have some people that just haven't been responding. And then when I hit them with, you know, if you're interested, let me know. If you're no longer interested, let me know and I'll remove you from my list. And now they're like, oh, no, no, no. Don't remove me. I'm just, I'm just still not ready yet. They don't want to be removed from the list. And some people will say, yes, you can remove me. I'm no longer interested. So it is going to help you to be able to determine if this person, if you should be following up with this person or not. Mm -hmm. I like that. I That's like my that. favorite line. No, 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 no. Don't go <laughs> <Yep. make laughs> right. we'll with you with that in a minute. And my thing is too. I, I'm going. Listen. Tell me yes. Tell me no. Tell me quick. I gotta go. So if you don't want to be removed from the list, my thing is, what date will you be ready to start your business? Like, because I'm not playing. You know, follow it up. Follow it up. Follow it up. Follow up. What date will you be ready? I'm gonna. I'm gonna nail them down and give me a commitment. I don't care if they say, I won't be ready. Honestly, I ain't going to be ready until June 1st. Okay, fine. Just give me a commitment date. But what you're not going to do is waste my time. That's just me. And I'm not going to just keep following up with you every month to say, are you ready now? Are you ready now? No. What date will you be ready? Either you're interested or you're not. If it's not the right time, I can respect that. What date will you be ready to start your business? And that's what I'm rolling with. Uh, Kimberly. 
Yes, uh, Director Burke, uh, going back to the preview videos, I'm glad that you explained the difference between sending the preview ITA prior to the uh, RET video, because in my mind, uh, your rationale made sense. But in my mind, I was thinking, well, maybe we should send a preview rep prior to the preview IT, just because that's the money, the more money making side. So I was just trying to make sense, but that clarified it. So thank you. Yeah, and, and let me say this. If you know your person is a red, maybe you do send the rep first and then the preview ITA. But here's what you got to understand. Some people are going to be motivated by the travel side. How many of you join the business because of the travel side? See? Okay. But some people are going to be motivated about that residual income. How many of you join the business for the rep side? See, it's less people. So I always send the ITA first because the majority of people are attracted to this opportunity because it's travel. It's very few that you know, might be, again, unless you know they are a, a, a red, then I'm going to, you could send a rep first, but the majority of people are attracted to this business for, and again, they're going to get both, Kimberly, they're getting both. But as you saw, there were a lot more hands that went up because they joined for the travel side than there was people who joined for the marketing side. And again, part of that could be because whoever they were following on social media, all they posted about was travel, 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 travel. And they didn't post so much about financial freedom, personal freedom, time freedom, leaving a legacy. Like I post about the majority of that stuff. So in reality, I could, for the people who reach out to me, I could legitimately send the rep video first. Because I know if they came for me, they came because they saw me talking about the freedoms and and six figures and you know residual income. So I could lead with the rep side, but I still always lead with the travel side and they're gonna see the rep side anyway. Uh, Susan? Okay, so my question is, when you have someone that's giving you a commitment date, um, and this one's like two and a half weeks out, do I need to follow up with her like a week before the commitment date? Great question. When you have someone who has a commitment date and it's far out, you have got to keep them engaged or else okay. they're going to fall off. So one of the things that I do when people give me a commitment date, I say, okay, listen, when you get started, I want us to take off running. Because Do you want to make this money fast or slow? They always going to say fast, right? And I, and I let them know. My goal is to help you make money within your first 30 days. So there are some homework assignments I'm going to give you in preparation to you starting on the 5th or whatever. So number one, I need you to come up with the name for your travel agency. I know it sounds easy, but whatever you're thinking, somebody already took it. So come up with an original name. People get excited when they start planning to start a business and they put a lot of thought into the name and they start talking to their family about it. So I get them to do that. Then I tell them, I want you to identify 10 people, sharp, ambitious, driven, professional, money, motivated, good work ethic. Don't tell nobody that you're going to start this business. All I want you to do is write their names down. That's it. I'm going to train you on what to say. And then another thing I may have them do is to get on, depending on when they're going to join, if it's, if it's already like, let's say it's the middle of the month. I'm going to have them um, either A, get on the IMV, invite them to get onto the IMV, or I'm going to invite them to the team Zoom with Mr. Moore. Because you know, the last Tuesday of the month, it's opened up to your guests so they can see the culture. And he also gives a business overview. So I'm already trying to inoculate them into our culture by being on either the IMV or the team Zoom with Mr. Moore. And or if there's a weekly meeting at um, in their area, I tell them to go to the weekly meeting and to bring a guest because chances are their guests are going to want to join. And so now when they sign up, they're going to have their first new business partner. Does that make sense, Susan? Yeah, it does. Um, she actually caught um, Mr. Moore's meeting last week. And that's what, that's what got her so pumped up. I had sent her um, the video but she didn't even watch the video. 
she jumped on the Zoom thinking she wasn't going to be able to jump on the Zoom. She kind of surprised me. It, it was just weird how everything happened. And um, yeah, she gave me a commitment date like like February the 15th. So that's why I was just kind of curious because um, I've never had anybody give me a commitment date that far out. So yeah, I just want to yeah. make sure I'm doing everything correctly. Yeah, reach out to her and say, listen, I need you to start thinking of a name for your agency and you know, help her start working on her list with the memory jogger. Say, okay. when we, you get enrolled, we're going to kick this thing off and then start getting her plugged into the IMV. Okay. Brown, you want to add to that? Yes, and also just when you have those dates far out, continue, if you guys are connected with each other on social media, continue to engage with them. So you don't want to be the only time that you say something to them from now to February 15th is, all right, you ready to get started? So from now to that date, you know, on Facebook, continue to like their pictures, comment, reply to their stories, keep engaging and keep building that relationship until they get started. Because one of the things that I see a lot of the times too is the only conversations, like I have a lot of my business partners that will send me a screenshot of their messages. And they're like, what did I go, where did I go wrong? Or what could I have said? And one of the things that always stand out is, the only conversations y'all ever have is you still getting started? What's the new date? You want me to follow up next week? What's, there's no other conversations in between that. So continue to engage, like their comments, treat them like a person and not just this person that's going to be partnering with you in business. Build that relationship and keep engaging with them. That's good. That's good. Leroy? Okay, good evening. This might sound like a crazy question. But I know there's no no crazy question. What is the the perfect post to make them want to bite? Because I know sometimes I put out posts and I'm sitting there in my chair. Okay, they're gonna bite with this. They're gonna bite with that. I go live. They look at the live, but I don't get any responses. So what is the perfect post? I know you've been fishing for years, and I'm just starting to fish. So what is the perfect post that you can put out there to make them bite? There's no perfect post. You got to know your audience. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, there is a, a video about um, marketing on marketing your business on social media 101. Start there um, because sometimes they were it's not what you post about the business, but it's all the other stuff that's deterring them that's on your page, right? If you, and I haven't been to your Facebook page, but if I go to your Facebook page, number one, what's up, what am I going to know? If I go scroll, 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 three scrolls, what have I learned about you in those three scrolls? So answer that question. If I was to go to your Facebook page right now, Leroy, and go ahead and pull up your Facebook page if you want to, because I don't want you to lie. I want, I want the truth. If I scroll Three times, what did I just learn about you in those three scrolls? Okay, hold on, I'm there. I'm almost there. So go to. Da, 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 da. Okay, my first post is. Uh, where we at? Um, <laughs> it was just a little sunny humor, um, a picture I posted. And the next one was my live that I did on yesterday. And what the was next your live was, about? I was talking about um, the, like three freedoms, and okay. I I did my post, and I did my live in front of a courthouse, and okay. I said that's where you lose your, but you may lose your freedoms first, mm -hmm. but talk about by getting their freedoms back. Good, good. And did you do a call to and action my, with that? No, ma'am, I didn't. Okay, so let's stop right there. When you are talking about your business, you must do a call to action. What is a call to action? It's telling your audience, if you're interested in learning more about what I'm sharing, I need you to do X, Y, Z. So I did it. I, I told them to contact me. What'd you say? I told them to contact me or DM me. Okay. After yeah. Live, that was a yes. call to action. So you did okay. that. Okay. That's good. And the third post is what I like to do. Uh, I did baking on Saturday morning. So I mm -hmm. made a post of the two cases that I baked. So that's my third post. Okay. What else? Keep going. 
I uh, posted about the uh, congratulations, 77,000 active agents. Good. Next day, then after that was what we had the day before the, um, the 76,000 active agents. Mm -hmm. Then I did, uh, well, I was the, I got my RC specialist certificate. Mm -hmm. Then I post, uh, everything is for everyone. Your tribe will vibe and connect with you. Don't force it ever. It's aligned beautifully. Mm -hmm. Then I did a uh, post with time to travel. Um, okay. I have a picture of me and uh, some travel things on it. Okay, so and it sounds like you have a good variety of posts. Here's my next question. How many friends do you have? Uh, we just went to this the other night. Let me look at this again. Uh, let's see. I have 1.2K followers and okay. 330 following. Okay, and how often are you adding new people? Uh, just about every day. Okay. So it sounds like you're you're doing all the right things, Leroy. You got a good variety of posts. You just got to be consistent about what you're doing. The other thing I would do is again announcing new business partners, right? If 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 Director Brown enrolls a new person, right, and she uh you know announces them in a the group, copy and paste that onto your personal page so that your followers see that. Yes, he has a business. You've already made that clear, but is your business growing? Is the company growing? Is anybody joining it? So I think that that would be a good addition to get things going. The other thing is what was the last live event you attended? Uh, the last one was uh, a, couple weeks, a couple weeks ago in Jacksonville. Okay, did you take pictures with you um and the and the leaders and in, in the room that the room was filled with people did you did you show that well a picture um mickey cooper was my sponsor she took <laughs> a picture and i posted it on my page okay but i'm talking about so when you go up to these weekly meetings everyone take a picture of of the room packed with people take a picture of the presenter presenting the opportunity where they could see the screen that they're doing a presentation or whatever you want to show your followers, Leroy, that there are tons of people that are interested in this opportunity and they are taking time to get to these meetings and you don't want them to miss the next one. Okay. Right. Director Brown, you want to add anything to, to that? Nope. Um, everything that you discuss, we've discussed. So <laughs> yeah. Now it's confirmation that he's good. He's on the right track. You know, I had to let him know, you know, we always say compete, but don't compare. Don't get distracted by, you know, you see all these other people that might be getting business partners. And now you're like, well, why am I not getting anyone? And the same thing I was telling him, you're doing the right thing. So now we just got to be consistent. We had that phone call on Thursday. On Friday, he got his first business partner. So, yep. Wait, where am I standing? <laughs> yes, I love it. Congratulations. And here's the other thing, Leroy. How long have you been in the business? How long have you, yeah, how long have you been in the business? It's on uh, September 30th. Like okay. October. And how long have you been doing the posting and stuff and things that you're supposed to be doing consistently? Like probably about a month ago, a month or two okay. ago. Okay. So y'all catch that? He got started last year, but it's only been pretty much this year that he's, or the end of December, that he's been working it consistently. People on your social media need to see that you've been doing this consistently for a while. That Because they think, it, oh, you just started something, but you ain't going to stick with it. Right? So there's people who, when they reach out to me, Leroy, they're like, I've been following you, you know, for years. And I saw when you were working and you quit your job and I saw you build, buy the first house. I saw you build the second. They see, so now they're like, okay, yeah, you the, you the real deal. I don't know you. I've never met you in person, but by your social media, I can tell you the real deal and you're serious about your business. I see you crisscrossing the planet. You was in Vegas. You were here. I saw you do this trap. They need to see that consistently for a while. And then they'll start jumping in your inbox. Okay, uh, Beverly. There we go. First of all, let me thank you all for this 
platform to get to answer these questions like this. And, and I want to say to everybody on here, if if you have a question, just ask. There are no stupid questions. There's no reason to feel uncomfortable here because I'm going to say this. I, I was part of the uh, founding partners of the John Maxwell team, and it was like less than 100 of us. And I was so afraid to ask questions. I screwed up because those who asked questions moved. And Corey got on here, and she just went at it. And so I said, I'm not going to sit here. Every question that comes to my mind, I'm going to ask. Um, <laughs> so my question is, I have a young man who is going to get started in the business. His mother-in-law got ill. She had to go to the hospital, you know, yada, yada. And then his wife got ill. So what I do is I just reach out occasionally. We went to high school together. I reach out occasionally, say hi to him. Uh, he and Greg, uh, Director Scott are both Kappas. So I connected them to, and they've already talked. And so I'm trying not to look like um checking in all the time because mm -hmm. I'm saying, how's your family? And I do yeah, a check good. occasionally. Mm -hmm. But also I invite him to the IMV. I invited him to uh, the prayer call because he's a, uh, a Christian guy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my question is, how do I continue to massage that? Because, you know, when your family's sick and that's your priority, that's your priority. So right. um, just- uh, Yeah, when someone is sick, I mean, I kind of take a, my, keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on. Most people who are getting sick these days, they sick for a good two weeks. <laughs> so I may not reach out for another two weeks. Hey, you know, just checking in, how you feeling? Right. And then based on their responses, they say, oh, I'm so much better. Great. Great. Um, I know that you were, you know, interested in the business. What date you going to be ready to get started? I'm not going to keep nah, 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 nah. like either you in or you out. Because here's the thing that I want y'all to remember. Somebody sick. Most people. They only going to be out of work for maybe two days. They still going to work, right? So why should we be holding back on our business for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks? Me, I'm not doing that. I'm going to give you a couple of weeks, you know, check out. Matter of fact, I was supposed to meet with a, a gentleman uh, uh, in the beginning of January, and he literally canceled as I was on my way to the appointment because he said he just started coughing ridiculously like he literally got sick on the way to the meeting right and actually this was nope this was in December so I was like all right it's the holidays da, 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 da. so guess what I'm gonna reach out to him this week and I'm gonna say hey just wanted to follow up with you uh when are you available for us to meet so we can talk about this business and I'm gonna set the date so we can do business so I waited because it was the holiday because there's no point in trying to meet during the holiday and then after the holiday, he got sick, right? So, you know what I mean, um, Beverly? People are not stopping life because they got sick. <laughs> they got missed two, three days of, of work and they going to work. So why can't you do business if they still going to work? That's just my thought. Director Brown, what are your thoughts on that? Same. I mean, even now, you know, <laughs> like I always say, we will go to work if we, you know, we got a migraine, we still going to go to work. But if we got a migraine, oh, I can't work the business. I got a migraine. Like we do all these other things when we're sick and we're not feeling good. So if you were serious about this business, when I shared the information with you, are you still getting started? What date do you want to get set up? And mm -hmm. so now if they give me that date, now I can follow up with them based on that date. So if you feel like you keep reaching out, you keep following up, you don't want to feel awkward. If you have that follow-up date that they gave you, I'm not going to feel awkward reaching out to you because you gave me that date that this is when we're going to connect and you're going to get started. So I agree 100%. Bam fam. If you ain't bam famming, yeah, you're going to feel like you chasing them and it's awkward. But if you bam, bam, you got an appointment and you're just honoring your commitment to the appointment as a professional would. Johanna, great question, Beverly. So I had somebody that um, I had peaked um, 
a couple weeks ago. <laughs> And it was, I, it was, she commented on my post for the in-person meeting in Rochester. Um, and she asked if there was a virtual option. Mm -hmm. So I invited her to the webinars um, and she said she couldn't be, she couldn't make it. So I sent her the peak interest videos, the I, peak IETA and the peak rap. Wait, 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 wait. Are you sure you sent peak? ITA and peak rep? Yes. Or did you send preview ITA and preview rep? Like, what exactly did you uh, send her? This is important. I, I want to say it was the peak, but let me check. Um, the peak ITA and the peak rap. Did you watch the Jaffe 2.0 training? No, I didn't. This was, I can tell. <laughs> this I was, can tell. um, she commented on my January 9th post. So okay, she, what was your post about? Um, it said, since the new year, have you been thinking about new opportunity, new investment, leaving a legacy? Stop thinking and act now. Join me on Saturday, January 14th at 1 p.m., um, 400 Bakers Park, Rochester, New York. Only one hour of your time is needed. Your life can change. Are you ready? Okay. So your post was the peak. Okay. So I should have sent her the preview. Okay. So, but my preview question is preview and preview rep. Yeah, because you already peaked her. The post was the peak. Okay. You watch the Jappy 2.0 training video. I tell you to use the peaks when someone says they are not interested in your business and you're saying, hey, no problem. If you know of anybody that's interested, please send these two 40 second videos to them. So they can use the peak videos to peak their network of people for you because no clue how can i refer someone to your business if i don't even know what your business was because i told you i wasn't interested so the peak videos will allow me like i might have my nephew who says who's looking for ways to make extra money and i say oh you know what my friend johanna has some type of business opportunity i don't know what it is because i told her i wasn't interested but let me send you these two videos she sent me and if you're interested i'll introduce you to her that is how you want to use the peak videos it's for the people who are not interested, they have no clue what it was, but you're asking them for a referral. That's how I use it. But you're, in your situation, Johanna, your post was the peak. So remember, we're taking people from the P, what's next? The preview. The S, show the plan, three-way call. Your post was the peak, so what's next? Now you got to show them the plan. Okay. So she's showing the plan. She did great on the webinar. She seen the video 100% and she was like, I'm still interested. Let me know when is the next um, webinar. So she got on the webinar. Um, wait, wait, wait. So she got on the webinar. Right. So then I asked her from the webinar, do you have any questions? Um, how, what are you thinking? Are you, gonna, are you interested? And she hit me with one that y'all never went over because usually y'all say they usually say um I'm not ready or you know I don't have the time hers was okay, so what did you miss so her thing was she researched other companies and that ours was a little more pricier than theirs okay when you invited her to here's where you messed up you invited her you took her from the P mm -hmm. And then you invited her on to the webinar. So you took her to the S. So what was next? The three-way call. That's where you messed up. So at the point that you invited her to the webinar, she said, yeah, I'm going to join. You should have said, okay, great. I want to be able to follow up with you to get your feedback and to answer any questions. When are you going to be available for a call? If you would have did that, now you have an appointment with Director Brown who's gonna be able to address that question she was gonna ask. But because you didn't follow the system, 
you put yourself in a situation where now she came back with something and you don't know how to respond. Right. The three-way call. I will follow up with her. So that's why. Right. But, but, <laughs> but because you're, here's, here's the thing, Johanna, because you're not following the system, number one, you're dragging out a process that don't need to be dragged out. Right. You want to operate with a sense of urgency. Okay, you've seen the, the webinar. So they got a full 30-minute presentation. At that point, either you in or you out. Either you want to join or you don't. There's no need to get on another webinar or send you another. No, you got on. Okay, we're going to close the deal. I'm going to get you on with a senior business partner. I want to I get your feedback from the webinar and answer all your questions. That is the three-way call. Bam, bam. If you invite someone to a webinar, and they tell you they're going to get on before you in that conversation, schedule the three-way call. Say, great, you're getting on tonight, eight o'clock. Listen, I want to schedule a time with you because I want to get your feedback and answer any questions. I'm sure you're going to have some questions after this. When are you available for a call? Schedule the three-way, but it, it is the three-way. It's not a call with you and them to say, so what did you think? No, because P S three. Y'all say it with me. P S three. Take the person from step one to step two to step three. If you don't follow the system, if you don't do the three-way call, you will kill a potential prospect because you're going to mess it up. Because y'all ain't been in the business long enough. You're not documented. Because here's the thing, Johanna. She says she looked at some other businesses, right? And it our business costs more money, which I find that extremely hard to believe. But okay, let's go with that. You get her on the phone with Crystal Brown, who's a sneeze away from six figures. Does it matter now that, that we pay 60 bucks a month? No. Right. Crystal's going to be able to shut that whole thing down. And then Crystal can leverage my story. Really? My, my, my coach, my mentor, she did the business for 20 months, was able to walk away from her job, doubled her corporate salary. Totally demolishes her objection. She can't come back with nothing. Right. But see, you can't have that conversation. You got to get yourself out of the way. You got two powerhouses with teams of over 500 people and you're not leveraging us. You're trying to do it on your own. So just stick to the PS3. Get them up. When are you available for a call? Okay? okay. And then that'll help you. You won't, you won't be in that situation. Does that make sense? Yes. Director Brown, you want to add anything to that? I don't want to add anything to that, but really quickly, I'm just now logging into Facebook, so I apologize, Facebook, um, with some questions. Kim okay. Parker had asked earlier in the evening, after sending the big picture video, I have about six to seven people that say they want to join, but they got to get their money right. I can't figure out how to turn them into three-way calls. And so I'll answer my, and then throw it to you, Director Burke. You still gonna have a three-way call. So if you're telling me I'm super interested, this sounds great, but I don't have any money, no worries. I still wanna get on the phone. I still wanna answer your questions, make sure you have a full understanding of everything. And of course, that still turns into the three-way call. So even if someone says they love it, but they don't have the money, you're still gonna have a call so that your expert can get that date set of when they are going to get started sometimes they might magically got the money now because now that expert has made them so excited you know what i'm gonna call my sister and get this money i'm gonna get started tomorrow so even if they don't have the money you guys still have the three-way call your thoughts director burke yes if you would have scheduled the three-way call before you sent the big picture video you wouldn't be in that situation in the first place Nobody gets the big picture video without scheduling the three-way call. Nobody. Even if you do a great post saying, 
hey, who wants to get financial freedom, personal freedom, and time freedom, you know, private message me or DM me or whatever, and you get some people who jump in your inbox and they're like, oh yeah, you got a business opportunity where I can get those three freedoms, I'm interested. What's your first response going to be? Great. When are you available for a call so we could discuss and I can get your questions answered and share this information with you? Boom. That is the three-way call. How about Tuesday, six o'clock? Great. I got you down for Tuesday, six o'clock. What's your phone number? 321-507. Okay. Got it. Listen, I'm going to text you a 10-minute video that's going to go into detail about this opportunity. I want you to watch it, write down your questions, and I'm going to get them answered on our call. Done. So, so you I, did it that way, you already got the appointment set. So I did that. I did that. And I, I, before I sent her the video, I scheduled a follow-up call. So I sent her, it was the, that morning, um, at 11 o'clock, something like that, sent her the video, scheduled a follow-up call. She said she, you know, around four o'clock or three, three o'clock, four, four, four o'clock Eastern time, three o'clock my time. I had looked on um, Director Brown's calendar, scheduled the call, um, and then just before, about maybe um, 30 minutes before we were supposed to have our call, I looked and I seen she hadn't even looked at the video. She mm -hmm. hadn't even looked at the video. So mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't want to bother Director Brown by you know even doing the three-way call because she hadn't even looked at the video. And when okay. I, I followed up with her, I sent her a message like, um, you know, sent, did, you, did you, or asked her, even though I could tell she didn't look at it. I said, so what did you think of the video? No response. Followed okay. up yesterday. So, hold on, let's go back a second. Anytime you have a three-way call scheduled, this is how you could have avoided that whole thing. An hour before the appointment, you text them. Hey, just calling to confirm our appointment for four o'clock. Please make sure you have watched 100% of the video and have your questions ready. They're going to respond. And if they don't respond, that was really, really canceled. But sometimes when they see that, they'll be like, oh, crap, that's right. And then they'll go and watch the video and say, yeah, I'll be ready. Or they might say, oh, I haven't watched the video yet. Say, okay, it's only 10 minutes. Watch it. And I'm going to give you a call at the top of the hour. So you got to confirm the appointment before the appointment an hour before because they may have forgotten and if you do that you won't run into that situation now if they don't when you send that message and let's say you send that message then now you want to text director brown uh, confirming our six o'clock right now waiting on a response so now crystal's like okay she's making sure that this is going to actually take place and then now if your prospect doesn't respond at all now you can kind of cancel it you can say no confirmation. So Crystal's now thinking, uh, okay, it may, it, there's a good chance this is not going to happen because the person didn't respond to the confirmation. Now at four o'clock, you still should call the prospect because who knows, they could have been in the area with a dead zone. The text didn't come through. If they work in a hospital, I know they didn't get it, right? Because until they step outside. So you still want to call them at the mm -hmm. time the appointment supposed to and they may answer they may not but at that point now you're going to know whether or not hey did you get a chance to watch the video you know I wanted to introduce you to my senior business partner she's doing some amazing things and I told her all about you so she, you know I have her on she's waiting for me to call her because I told her about you you know right. so now you can kind of finesse it does that make sense yep but I like I said I've continued to call her she's still like she's left me on red so like and I also have seen that she still has not watched the video but so like, don't go by that because we had the mo a different mobile app before and it was very inconsistent oh, okay. of letting us know whether or not someone watched the video. So don't rely on the mobile app to tell you whether or not someone has watched the video. Just act like that feature ain't even there. Okay. Always assume that they have watched it. Okay. That's what I always well do. I don't speak, I didn't yep. speak to I mean I'm not speaking to people as if they didn't watch it. I'm just like, you know, have you watched right. the video? You know, but yeah, yeah, no, don't even say that. Just say I'm you know, just always assume that they have. Just okay. always assume that they have. Um uh, Christine and then Latoria. Um my I, my had a similar situation where um I sent them a video uh yesterday 
called him back. He didn't, he hadn't had a chance to watch it. He said he was going out. So I invited him on the Zoom for tonight. So he came on the Zoom tonight. I checked, I texted him. I mean, I checked the participants. He was there. But before, when they got to the compensation plan, I just, I texted him and said, um, I see you made it on or I, no, I checked and he was gone. Mm -hmm. So I texted him and asked, did you make it on? And he didn't answer. So he left the Zoom. Mm -hmm. So my question is going forward, is that, should I just assume that, I mean, I want to assume anything. I don't want to assume that he left because he wasn't interested, but like, how would you going forward, would you even so yeah, so if you if you do all the things that I've already said, you won't have an issue. Number one, you invited him on to the webinar, make sure he already has the video so that if he jumps off the webinar, it don't matter because he got the big picture video. And number two, if you schedule the follow-up at the time you invite them to the webinar, you already have a time to call them back. So it don't and matter if he jumped off or not, you already have an appointment to follow up with him. And so now he may watch the video before the call. Because again, you're going to follow up an hour before. Hey, just confirming our appointment for six o'clock. Please make sure you have watched 100% of the video. Have your questions ready. So now it doesn't matter if he jumped off the webinar or not because he got the video. Right, but what I'm saying is now he's, he didn't answer. Since he we had an appointment for after the webinar for the mm -hmm. three-way and he jumped off the webinar and I haven't had a response back since even for the appointment and he has the he has here's the my response hey if you're still interested in this opportunity let me know and i'm moving on because the people that are hungry they will find you he's basically saying christine i'm really not ready right now that's what he's saying without saying it that's what he's saying director brown you want to add anything to that i will say one of the things that i've learned is is Sometimes people may leave you on red or ghost you, and it's only because as an adult, they're embarrassed that they don't have the $200. And some people are okay with telling you I don't have the money, and some people are really, really embarrassed by it. So they are going to leave you on red. They are going to dodge you. But like Director Burke said, just, hey, are you still interested? Just, just let me know. A, a yeah. lot of people are really, truly embarrassed that they don't have $200. Right, right. So just say, hey, we had an appointment. Da, 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 da. I understand this might not be a good time for you, but when you're ready to discuss this business or to get started, just let me know and, and leave it alone. Because if you're friends with them on Facebook, they're going to see you moving and shaking. And when they get ready, they get their coins together, they're going to reach out to you. We, this is not a convincing business. And remember this, y'all. And if you're taking notes, write this down. You only want the hungry people. If they're not hungry, you don't want them because they ain't going to come in and do nothing. You want hungry people that are sick and tired of being sick and tired and they want the bag. They want the freedoms. You do not want people that are comfortable. You want the people that are uncomfortable not having their hands or access to $200. Okay. And so, Christine, he's not hungry. Because if he was, he would have given you the courtesy of responding. He's either not hungry or not ready. Either way, what they don't say speaks volumes. The hungry people will jump in your inbox and say, I'm interested. I'm ready. I was on the webinar. I got some questions. What do I need to do to get started? That's what the hungry people do. Okay. Thank you. And if you keep trying to follow up with them, now you put yourself in a, a you look desperate and you look like you have weak posture. And I don't want anybody coming off like that because what we have is so strong, we, our posture should be like, we should be strutting like peacocks. We had a thousand people join in 72 hours. If that don't move you to say, ooh, I, I want to get on this train and guess what? I don't want you because you're stupid. You don't. <laughs> I ain't saying that, but that's what I'm thinking. That's just me. Latoria? Hello there. Hi. Um, how are you? Good, good. That's good. I actually um, raised my hand because you're talking about the uh, big picture video mm -hmm. and making that, um, setting up that three-way call prior to. Mm -hmm. And I've been told 
otherwise, like I've been sending people this video for, well, since I started. So now this is telling me that I'm just doing all of that backwards. And, uh, well, I'm not gonna say that. Nope. I'm not gonna say that because there's, we all want the same thing. We all want the sign up. I'm just sharing with y'all what I do. I'm not saying that what you were told to do was wrong at all. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is with my six and a half years of being in this business with a team of over 3,100 people making six figures, I have figured out some things to do to have better outcomes than other ways of doing things. Does that make sense, Latoria? So I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong. I'm just saying, if you're not being, if you're not able to get to the three-way call, try, try it my way and see what happens. Okay. All right, Leroy. Mm -hmm. Well, Director Brown, do you want to add anything to that? Because were you told differently or whatever? Um, nope. I'll say, uh. Like you said, you may have learned it a different way. Somebody may have told you to do a certain way, and we're not going to say that that way is wrong. But if that way has not been working, now you're learning a new way. So now you can implement the way that we're discussing now and see if that works better for you and go from there. Yep, yep. And everybody, remember, we all have different networks, right? My network of people are different than Director Brown's network of people. Right. Michelle's network of people are going to be different than Bethany's network of people. Some people have a network of blue collar workers. Other people have a network of corporate America people. Other people have a network of educators. Other people have a network of six figure income earners. All of them people are going to operate a little bit differently. So you got to know your audience. You got to know your audience. But again, you're looking for professional people. Latoria and professional people operate by appointments. That's the one thing they got in common. If they are a professional, they operate by appointment. I don't care if you sick and you go into Publix and you see your doctor, doctor, I don't feel good. What's she gonna say? Call my office and schedule an appointment. That's the way professionals work. And we're looking for professional people in this business. And I'm sorry, you can't just randomly reach out to me and start talking to me about business. My mindset might be um, relaxing. I, when, I'm a t when I'm ready to talk about business, I'm gonna have a paper, pen. My mindset is I'm ready to do business and hear what you gotta say. You can't just randomly just start talking to me about business and expect that I'm gonna be ready for that. That's how professionals do business by appointment only. Same thing with the three-way calls. I know there are some leaders that will tell you, oh, you got somebody on the phone, just reach out to me. Well, I'm telling y'all, don't try that with me. Don't go sending me no random text. Director Burke, are you available for a three-way call at six o'clock? Because guess what I'm going to say to you? <laughs> David, what am I going to say if you send me a random? Are you available for a three-way call right now? I got somebody. What am I going to say to you? Check my calendar. Ding, 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 ding. Because guess what? I got a family and I got a business too. So I'm just sitting around waiting for you to text me that you got somebody on the phone that you want me to talk to. Sorry, I'm not doing it. Even if I'm free, I'm not doing it. Because basically you're saying you don't respect my time. It's by appointment only. But again, there are some leaders who will say, well, just call me. If you got somebody just, I don't operate like that. And don't think you can call, just randomly call Director Moore and say, I got somebody who's retired military. Are you, what? Don't do that. Operate with the spirit of excellence. Everything should be scheduled. You want quality people. And the professionals operate by appointment only. They understand. And they'll take your business more seriously when they see that you're looking to schedule an appointment with them. They will take you more seriously because they're like, oh, okay, it's different. Leroy? 
I was just going to say that communication is the key, especially when it comes to three-way. Because like my my first business partner, thank God for for Director Brown, she was very patient because the lady, uh, she was going to join the business. She gave me a time. We called three-way call. Then when I called her, she said, well, I'm heading home from work. Give me 30 minutes. Then the 30 minutes came, nothing. I'm like, okay. I reached out to her, nothing. I, I immediately texted Director Brown and said, look, okay, this was happening. She said, okay, just keep me in the loop. Never know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I'm on, I'm sitting in my car in the driveway, and I'm waiting. I said, I'm not going to sleep night until this lady, until we get this done. So after all, she finally reached out to me, and I reached out to Director Brown. So let's do it. We got on, got us signed up, and of course, I slept very well. And uh-huh, that's, good. that's good. That's good. Yeah, also, keep them in the loop. Yeah, we got some time. I, I've had that situation with David, right? My call went over. So I wasn't ready at the time. And I'm like, I'm still on the call. And then I'm like, I'm ready. And he's like, okay, well, she ain't ready now because now she got to go. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, you're going to have to get with Director Brown because then I had another appointment. So, you know, we're going to be as flexible as we can be, but everything needs to be by appointment only. All right. I want to get into what we were supposed to be talking about tonight, which isn't a huge topic. Um, but it's about the list that you were creating. And so now remember you went through your calendar and you scheduled times to do posts and to go live and you've gotten responses, right? There's people who have liked your post. There's people who have commented on your post. Make sure that you are looking at the people who comment and like and you are adding them to your list. This is how your list is going to continue to grow. You're not peaking them right away. But if you do a post, like how many of you did a post talking about the 77,000 we hit and the 76,000, right? You got people who like that post and some of those people are not in the business. And hopefully you didn't just post the banner. I hope you turned it into a prospecting post. So let me show you what I'm talking about when I say, did you turn it into a prospecting post? Because we don't want to just post just to be posting. We're posting with purpose. Okay. So here's my banner. Need more evidence and proof we are going into momentum? How about a thousand new active agents in just 72 hours? If you are reading this post, you will never be able to say you didn't know. If you were born poor, it wasn't your fault. But if you die poor, it was a choice. Our legacy company, Planet Marketing, has achieved another major milestone. We are officially 77,000 active agents strong across 21 countries. If I've ever sent you some information about partnering with me or you got started and quit for whatever reason, now is the time to start again. Don't look back a year from now and wish you would have taken advantage of this opportunity. If you were ever in planet marketing in the past and you are ready to come back and join a winning team with leadership that operates with a spirit of excellence, with training and support, click this link to schedule an appointment for more information. I just can't let you miss this opportunity to set you and your family financially free. I did not come from wealth, but wealth will come from me. And then I did some hashtags, right? And so here's where I'm looking. These people, if they are not in the business, guess what? They're getting added to my list. And at some point when I'm going to pull the next 70 or 50 that I'm going to prospect for the week, they're going to fall in that list. Right. Same thing with announcing a new business partner. I'm looking who commented. If they're not in the business, they're going to get added to my list. Right. Another post talking about the business. Uh, No, this one wasn't. Yeah. Another post talking about the business. I'm looking at all of these people. If you did not join the business, if you're not in the business, you're getting added to my list. I'm looking at the comments. If you're not in the business, you're going to get added to my list. So your list is always building, always. Director Brown, anything you want to add to that? 
this is the perfect time to utilize the um, conversation starters that I put in the group that very first week that we started. So I uploaded a document of just some ideas of how you can start those conversations with people that are liking your posts. And so make some adjustments based on what the post is about, but those are really, really going to help you. So go back. I believe it should be pinned at the top of the group. If not, it's in the files section as well. If you go to files, you'll find the document there. Okay, so let's find good. it for everybody so people don't be like, I don't know what she's talking about. It definitely should be in files right across the top there. Okay, so let's just go straight to files. Yep. Did it click? Oh, there we go. This is in the way. Conversation starters right here. Yep. So remember, always make adjustments, always make it you. So you're not just going to copy and paste it exactly how it is in that document. Make it sound like you use words that you use. You know, if it's a, a friend that you know, make those adjustments so that it doesn't sound like it's just a script that you copied and pasted. And I actually left the quotation marks off purposely because I've seen people send scripts and they leave the quotation marks. Oh my on. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so please don't leave the little blank line. Mm -hmm. That means you're going to fill in the person's name there and um, make adjustments as needed. Love that. Love that. Uh, Director Brown, you want to go to the Facebook and see, do we have any other questions? Yes. I don't think we did. It was just a lot of comments. Let me double check. Let me refresh it. Okay, no, no new questions, just comments. All right, so what are we doing this week? Stick to your DMO, follow your calendar, keep adding to your list. This is the work. We're, we're four weeks into this. You, 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 this is what the work looks like. Make sure you're going live. Make sure you're announcing new business partners. Make sure you're scheduling your posts for your, your travel agency group. Make sure you're hitting your weekly goals for peaks, exposures, and three ways. Today, we discussed adding the list, and we discussed a lot about how to get that three-way call to make sure you get it. Bam, fam, book a meeting from a meeting. We also talked about levels of exposures start with the videos if that don't close them now invite them to a webinar if that don't close them now invite them to the weekly meeting right there's levels utilize the levels any questions before we end this um session tonight everybody got what they needed y'all ready to get to work leroy you ready Yep, I'm ready. I just had one one thing to add, and I'll be quiet because I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited about the work. I I think this uh the boot camp probably should be like a, a prerequisite once you get signed up, because now that I think if I'd known this stuff when I first started, I'd probably be a lot further along than what I am now. But everything's happened for a reason, so I'm glad I'm, I'm where I'm at. So it probably be something that we can include in when the person first get hired or first starts. Anybody agree with him? Wow, Director Brown. We're going to have to talk about that. <laughs> I know. Absolutely Remember, agree with him. And, and I know that, you know, Director Burke mentioned when we first started that first week, this isn't going to be like a regular boot camp where the group is going to disappear and everybody's going to be removed. It's going to stay there. But if you do, and I was sp uh, speaking with, um, I think it was Josephine earlier this week, if you do utilize it and put your new business partners in, make sure you take them through everything. So don't just put them in here and just say, okay, go into the group and do whatever. Take them through that first week video, that second week, and so on and so forth. Take them through that process. Mm -hmm. Just like we're doing with you. And right. there's also something else that I was thinking about utilizing. I don't know if, it was, if I heard it through this boot camp or if I've heard it through the audibles that I've been reading. Or, or listening to, 
but it's like where you when you put someone in and we're relaunched when we're launching the business um the where you uh when they launch their when they first get started and they do you know five people and they get their first business partner i'm gonna help you get your first business partner within the first 90 days or something like that and like i said i don't know if i heard that through this boot camp or if i heard it through one of the audibles that i've been listening to mm-hmm. but i think that that is like very important because i think that that kind of will give them like momentum mm-hmm. to kind of like make them feel like wanting to get, keep going right right <clears throat> well and that's why i like with the 15 day quick start part one it says to schedule your business launch within the first 48 to 72 hours and that is that that addresses that whole thing to get them launched get their business launched so that they can get that first belief check the difference is the way you're saying it, and i've heard some people do it that way there's no structure to that it's like okay you got somebody, get them on the phone, call them right now. Like, I don't like that. Like, but not necessarily that, get them, but get them yeah. in front of something. Get them, show, show them still the PS3, show them the yeah. plan and that, that kind of stuff. Show them the plan. You don't have to know everything. Right. Show them the plan. Um, look, I just started a new business. I'm really excited about it. I, I want, I want to share this with you, you know, just five people or whatever and show them the plan and, and start that three way call. And if they're able to get, at least two of those five people, you know, that that would kind of like get the momentum and momentum and get them motivated. Yep, absolutely. Again, all of that is in the 15 day quick start part one. You talk about launching them and helping them come up with their top 10 to 20 people and schedule that um, that launch so that you can build that momentum. All right. So this was great. Next week, we got two more weeks, two more weeks. Um, just giving you a head up next week is when you need to have uh, that HDMI cable, that laptop or whatever. So if you haven't gotten those things and we mentioned that uh, in our pre boot camp webinar that you needed to have those things. So if you don't have it, you got a week to get it. All right. So everyone have an amazing week. Any closing comments, Director Brown? I missed y'all last week. So <laughs> happy to see everybody again. <laughs> yes, we missed you too, but I I, I held it down for you. <laughs> I know you did. I know. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great night. Love y'all. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Bye.